now a week I will cover the muscles of the arms. We've already said that this is the deltoid and under it this is the bicep. The deltoid is for the abduction of the arm which means raising it outward away from the midline and the bicep brachii flexes the elbow brings this up and shortens this and the brachial radius brachial radialis I'm sorry is next and that is here the muscle that comes from here all the way the brachial radius is number 19 and that is this muscle here it comes up into this portion and connects right here and this muscle on the top is used for the flexion of the forearm. It is called the brachioradialis because it connects to the it connects to the brachialis, which is found under the bicep. The brachialis, like I just mentioned, is found under all of this. I have removed the deltoid and I'm about to remove the bicep to reveal the Brachialis. The brachialis is this piece here. It is under the bicep. And you can see each side of it when the arm is on a regular state. You can kind of see on my own arm where the brachioradialis is. It is this portion right here. The pronator teres, which pronates the forearm, palms down is found right next to the brachial radii. It is this muscle that comes this way. You can see that it runs right in here. It's all the way down to its connection here. And on my arm, you can kind of... No, you can't, never mind. The flexor carpi radialis is right under the pronator teres. That is the right word, right? Yeah, right under the pronator teres. And it runs all the way here and connects towards where the thumb is. And it is used to flex and abduct the wrist. Again, this is the flexor carpi radialis. Also, the flexor carpi radialis is given that name because it connects to the radius. It's on that side. The flexor carpi ulnaris is here on the very bottom. It's where your pinky is, and it's connected to the ulnar. That's why it's given that name. If we look, I have a couple of pictures here that I pulled up. This is the flexor carpi radialis, and this is the flexor carpi ulnaris. And you can see that this connects the ulna, and this connects to the radius. And the flexor Carpi ulnaris is also used for the flexion of the wrist. The flexor digitorum profundus is a deep muscle found on top of the forearm. We can see all these different pictures of it. See it here. It is on top of the arm and it goes to the hand. I removed this, but you can't really see it that well, so just know that it's under this section here. It's on top of the hand, but it's deep. And here it is on the presentation. It is used for the flexion of the fingers and the wrist. The flexor retinaculum is here on top of the hand. It's this portion right here. And we can see it on the slide. It's right here. The palmaris longus, if you come to the two middle fingers here and you trace it up the arm, you will see that this comes and connects right here, which is this muscle right here, number 13, palmaris longus, the two middle fingers. Trace it up. It's going to be number 13, which is the palmaris longus, and it's used for the flexion of the wrist. The triceps brachii is under the brachialis, 
and under the bicep, it's the bottom portion of the arm. It's got somewhat of a horseshoe shape to it, you can't really see it that well, and it's used for the extension of the forearm. There's a better view of the tricep, you can see it's horseshoe shape, and it's flexed by extending the arm outward. The serratus anterior is this right here. It's kind of got like a serrated edge where it connects to the rib cage. I have removed the rib cage so you can't really see the connection very well in this model. But it is a deep ish muscle and it is used to abduct the scapula, which means to take these back, your shoulder blades back away from your midline. The latissimus dorsi is right here under the trapezius muscle and it is used for the extension and the adduction of the arm. You can see it goes all the way down and almost touches the external oblique here. It's this large muscle here, the latissimus dorsi. 